Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals, and in today's video I want to talk about Andals, in case you haven't been able to guess that by my background. It's a beautiful day, so I decided to do a little filming outside. Today, I want to talk about what makes a good and proper anvil. The anvil that you're looking at is well over a hundred years old. It was cast in 1896, and it's been used right up until today in a copper shop. Now, this anvil is mostly cast iron with a steel work face forge welded to the top of it, which is relatively common. You can actually see the difference in the materials between the cast and the uh, steel work surface. Now, like all good anvils, it has a pitcher hole and a hardy hole. Uh, some of the modern anvils that you can find today don't have these. Some of the ones that you find at the bargain big box stores, and I'll show you those in just a second. Here we have a 70 pound mass produced cast iron anvil that you typically find at most of the big box stores slash uh, mail order catalogs. It is a entirely cast iron body. There is no welded steel work face to it. And even though these corners look nice and sharp now, once you start using them they will round out rather quickly because it's not hardened steel. The horn has a less uh, dramatic taper to it. It's um, it's just inferior to the old way of making anvils and there are companies out there that still make the old style anvils but you can spend anywhere from seven hundred to fourteen hundred dollars for a new one and the price goes up from there over the past two years there's been a re-emergence in the interest of blacksmithing a lot of people have been trying to locate old tools tongs vices and anvils and they're getting harder and harder to come by and when you do find them they can be really expensive a good alternative to the cast iron anvil is a section of rail track now i don't know very many people who have been in blacksmithing that have not banged metal on a rail track and it's a very good quality steel if you get it cut right by somebody who has a decent bandsaw you can get very good edges um, you can flatten it on a surface grinder. There's just much more durability in this piece of track than you're going to find in that 70 pound cast iron anvil. So what's the real difference between cast iron and steel? Well, have you ever heard that has a nice ring to it? It's an expression that came right out of the blacksmith shop. Cast iron sounds almost dead and lifeless compared to steel. You can hit it and you have just a dull thud. When you come over to steel, you can hear it ring and that's where it has a nice ring to it comes from now here's a nifty little anvil slash vice that turned up around 1900 or so this particular one was made in 1912 now I know a lot of people tend to think that the older something is the better it is the uh, the better made it was the higher quality it tends to be and that's not true in all situations this would be perfect for something like a tinsmith or a coppersmith I don't know how well you can see all the indentations in this particular uh, face, but this was hit with just a regular cross peen hammer from the looks of things, and it has a lot of nicks and gouges in it, which means that this is not a hardened work surface. And when you try to give it a peen test, it sounds even more pathetic than the cast iron anvil. A very common question that is asked of blacksmiths when unfamiliar people first start talking about anvils is what's the real difference between cast iron and steel? Well, isn't metal metal? Well, yes, metal is metal and that's where the similarities end. Every metal reacts differently. Every metal has different properties. Steel reflects energy back up towards the work surface where cast iron actually absorbs and dissipates the energy into the anvil. And just like this dead blow hammer versus a steel hammer, I know it's not metal versus metal, but it's the same principle. This hammer head is filled with sand, so when you strike something, all of the energy is absorbed in the hammer head. The same thing happens with a cast iron anvil. The energy gets absorbed, and it's not being reflected back to your workpiece. In blacksmithing, every time you put steel in the fire, it's called a heat. The more work you can accomplish per heat means the less time you're going to take to do the project, and the more efficient you tend to work. Now, when you're working on a steel work surface, a good hardened anvil, if I wanted to draw this out to a point, what I would do is hit it on two sides. 
and it would draw it out evenly because the energy coming back up from the anvil will also be shaping the point from the opposite two sides that I'm not striking with the hammer. On a cast iron anvil, when you are striking and the anvil is absorbing more energy than it's reflecting, you'll find that your point doesn't taper out evenly and you have to work all four sides of the metal to get it even. If you can't put your hands on a decent anvil, go to your local scrapyard. You can find a block of steel that can serve you very well as an anvil until you get the real thing. And I'm going to show you some of my scrapyard finds right now. You can find all different sorts and shapes of metal in a scrapyard. Now this ball is solid steel and when I do get an anvil my intention is to weld a post that will fit in the hardy hole so I can actually use this for dishing out copper ladles and uh, things like that. Uh, one of the things that I found on there is an old auto body dolly but it's got a nice rounded taper to it. It's almost the same um, circumference as the starting point of my horn here. But there's a lot of different things and those right there these three pieces of steel cost me less than five dollars at the scrapyard. So there are options out there if you're willing to look for them. Uh, if you take this and you put it inside of a vise, you have a pretty decent pounding surface. Well, you two, from the looks of things, I've got about an hour's worth of daylight left. The sun is slowly starting to dip in the sky. And I've got to get all this stuff back into the garage. I'm hoping that you learned a little bit about what to look for when you're going out to try to find your first anvil. If not, I hope you have an idea of what you can use to improvise. Uh, not everyone can get their hands on an anvil right away, whether it be for just not being able to find one or financial reasons. Anvils can be pretty pricey. But if you're interested in more information, there are a lot of great channels out here that talk about beginning blacksmithing. And the first video that I saw on anvils a while back was done by a gentleman who has a channel called Purgatory Ironworks. And if you like the type of stuff that I'm doing, I know you'll really love what he does. He is a very talented blacksmith. And hopefully someday at one of those renaissance fairs that he seems to demonstrate at, I'll run into him and give him, you know, have a chance to say hi and say thank you. But until I have that opportunity, I'm going to be up here in Connecticut making my little videos, and I hope that you enjoy them and keep watching them. But until tomorrow, this is Jeff of Dark Metals, and I'll see you again soon.